Jackson. Shooting 67 weddings last year. Taylor Jackson, welcome. So Taylor, you are well-known in this community. You're an amazing photographer. All right, now that the pineapple is in place, we can begin. Today, I'm talking to you about how to make $100,000 as a photographer. Uh, this isn't a real microphone. There's no cord coming out. I should be speaking to this side. This kind of makes up for my lack of professionalism in video by making it look a little bit more put together. Um, also, first, I'm gonna shoot the thumbnail. I have all these US $1 bills, um, 60 of them. I kind of gotta hide that it's $1 bills. I don't know, what's the thumbnail? This, money. Money, money camera. Oh, you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna do the, the make it rain on myself because I don't have anyone to help me. I'm gonna look at the camera. I'm gonna be really surprised that money is raining upon me like that. And then I'm gonna make it rain. I'm gonna fluff this money up a little bit more though. Is that the appropriate term? Money, money fluffer sort of thing? Is that a different industry? It sounds like it could be the same industry. All right, here we go. I've got a dollar in my hand. Let's get to the actual thing. $100,000, how to make it as a photographer in 2019. Um, when I have a large monetary goal, such as $100,000, I like to break it down into smaller things. So in this specific case, the easiest thing to break it down into is months. So um, 12 months in a year, roughly $8,300. You have to make every single month. Let's call it $8,000 a month um, to make $100,000, just to keep it easy and round. Um, and already that seems a lot more achievable, right? Maybe not, 8,000 is still a lot of money. Um, let us go through, I put all my math on this page so that I don't have to worry about uh, adding it up in front of you and making mistakes and being embarrassed. Whenever I feel like my video professionalism is too low, I'm gonna bring this microphone in and it's gonna really amp up the production quality. The number one way I am the most familiar with uh, how to make $100,000 is wedding photography. Wedding photography is the number one way that I think if you want to monetize your photography skills, if you are okay, um, I guess like the caveat is that it is hard work. It's not just like you don't just sign up and you just start shooting weddings and making a bunch of money. Um, it's stressful work. It's very hard in the beginning and there is a lot of competition out there. So as long as you are okay with working harder than everyone else in your city, um, you will get there. The upside to wedding photography is that it is really the most rewarding work that you can do. I think as a photographer um, or pretty close to um, I think by going out and capturing like these amazing memories of everyone looking amazing um, that's like the bride the groom the groom the groom the bride the bride the the families the everyone that's at the wedding um, to be able to give people actual proper memories that aren't just on an iPhone that are well cataloged and easy to go through and just beautiful. Um, there is a lot to be said about that and that is one of the reasons that I'm the most passionate about wedding photography. Um, I got into it ac accidentally, I guess, um, or intentionally also on accident. Basically, I was a concert photographer and I realized that there was kind of um, a limit to how much income you could make as a concert photographer. I don't think that there is any concert photographers, maybe commercial photographers that are making $100,000, but I don't think anyone's out there um, making like a significant income just shooting concerts. Put something in the comments below if I'm wrong, if somebody is killing it and um, making an amazing living and getting to do all kinds of things. The benefit to shooting concerts is kind of the cool factor of actually getting to go out with these bands and to go on tour and um, live on the road with them if that's what you chose to do. And that's kind of the pinnacle of it that if you can go on tour with the Foo Fighters and be like there, that's just an example, um, or like Drake or whoever you're into, um, and be their like personal photographer for an entire week. Are you gonna make like a million dollars potentially over a career? I don't know, probably not, but it is gonna be super cool for a little while. So that's kind of why I got into uh, concert photography. Then those people started getting married and they didn't want a wedding photographer. When I got into weddings like uh, almost 15 years ago now, it was a very different place. It was very boring. It was very stale. Um, it was very much like you were hiring the Sears portrait photographer to come out on location and shoot you guys like peeking out around a tree. Um, obviously a lot has changed since then. And when those people that were in the music industry contacted me, they were like, we do not want a wedding photographer. We want you to come and shoot us like we're band promos um, rather than actually just like a wedding. Uh, and then I just kind of took all the principles that I learned as a concert photographer, as a music photographer, and applied them to weddings. And that was a lot of fun for me. Uh, I was also attempting to book other weddings off Craigslist and stuff, and that was really a struggle. Um, I'm actually writing about that in the book that I will have out eventually. This has been the, the two year coming book, but it's in there. That's pretty much all I've written, to be completely honest so far. So wedding photography, what you need, you wanna make $100,000, um, and say your price point 
is you can kind of work this two ways. So you can work on how many weddings you want to shoot and then figure out what your ideal price point is from there. Or you can go the other way where you just price it um, kind of to compete with your market in the rough vicinity of anyone else that's kind of at your skill level and let the market actually dictate your price. Um, neither is right, neither is wrong. I think it's just kind of whatever is working in your specific unique ecosystem out there wherever you live. Um, but if you're able to shoot $25,000, $4,000 weddings, that's $100,000, that's 25 days of your life. Um, is this just like a switch you can turn on like right now and be like, I'm a wedding photographer, please give me $4,000 for a wedding? No, um, you have to spend a lot of time building your exact correct portfolio for you. One, to attract the clients that you actually wanna work for, which is um, incredibly important, even way more important than the money. Number two is that you have to make work that is in demand, um, not necessarily like trendy, like you don't have to follow every single trend, but you do have to be at least in the playing field of everyone else that you're competing against in your local city. Well, you might believe that if you go out and you do something that's completely unique and original and crazy and creative and everything that you're gonna get booked, uh, usually it kind of goes the other way and you have to kind of dumb your creativity and your skills down a little bit to kind of fit the box of a wedding. Um, at some point, this isn't necessarily the case and you can kind of start doing whatever you want, but you always do kind of have to stick to the rules and the guidelines of a wedding day um, in order to continue to compete in the field and to book a significant number of weddings a year. Um, also, if you are looking at weddings and you're like, wow, 25 at 4,000 seems a little bit high. I don't think I could ever charge that much. One thing I can tell you to do is to look into also coupling video coverage with your package. I do both photo and video as one human, uh, sometimes with a second photographer at a wedding. And that is something that has been able to increase my prices a lot. Um, maybe a more achievable price point would be $3,000. And if you are looking at that $3,000 price point, 33 weddings is all you have to shoot. 33.3, um, I guess, uh, to be exactly $100,000. Um, but if you shoot 33 weddings at $3,000, you are very, very close. You're at 99,900. That's not good math. I'll get the microphone closer to increase the professionalism. Or if you think $2,000 is more your price point, more what's going to actually work in your local market. Um, if you shoot 50 weddings, which seems like a lot, but I shoot 65 to 70 pretty much every single year. So um, it's definitely achievable. And you can definitely kind of scale this up so that if you start at $2,000, maybe every two weddings you book, just bump them up by like a hundred bucks or whatever. Um, and then eventually you're going to get to a price point and you're going to find that balance where you're making kind of what you should be making and also working with the clients that you want to be working with. Um, the cat's on the table now. Meow. The number one, I'll get closer to the microphone for this. The number one most important thing when it comes to actually photographing weddings is to first look after your life happiness uh, future first and make sure you're attracting the couples that you want to work for because when you are working for the couples that are exactly like you, it is the most fun job, the most rewarding job that you can do in the world. Number one rewarding as actually creating meaningful stuff that goes out into the world that makes people incredibly happy with your skills, with your, with your camera. And number two, it does create a pretty amazing life. Um, life freedom is always kind of my number one. I'm always the most after life freedom. That's why I, I kind of saw the option of wedding photography as being something that I did want to chase was because of the freedom that it allowed that yes, um, if I book 50 weddings, I'm here 50 Saturdays. Well, realistically destinations could be anywhere. Um, but for the most part, I'm here every Saturday, but my Thursday to, or my Sunday to Thursday is pretty much wide open. Um, so I'm able to go out into the world and travel and do all the stuff that you guys see on YouTube um, through the week. And this allows me both with the time flexibility and the, also the financial um, aspect of it. And then also um, beyond that, an excuse to go out and travel so that um, I really, really love sh setting up shoots like in places and um, just doing like portfolio work even at this stage of my career that I'm still setting up as many shoots as I can when I go out and travel. One, because the amount of credit that comes back to you whenever you do a great travel shoot um, is like exponential. And number two, I'd rather do that than sit on a patio and drink beers. Um, you can drink beers while you um, take pictures with your couples if your couples are cool. I'm actually allergic to beer. Um, I'm allergic to barley, but uh, I drink cider. So that's how it breaks down. Um, $25, $4,000 weddings, $33, $3,000 weddings, which I think for most people is probably the achievable goal. To, uh, to get to. And then $52,000 weddings, which is um, kind of a lot, especially if it's your first year, you're gonna find that the, the logistics behind the scene um, actually are very, very difficult until you get everything outsourced. But that's um, number, number five note, is to outsource all of your, your editing because you're out there creating the stuff, doing the fun part, and if you don't like editing, find somebody that is willing to do that for money. They're probably still not gonna like it, but they'll do it for money. Um, and that makes your life a lot happier, and you don't have to spend that Thursday, or Sunday to Thursday um, at your computer and doing like an 80 hour a week job when you can just be um, building and outsourcing from the very beginning. All right, so that is number one. Number one is complete.
Number two is social media subscriptions. So every business in our local area runs a social media page of some sort, whether that is a Twitter, whether that is an Instagram, whether that is a Facebook, usually all three of them, and they all need content and they don't wanna to work too hard about the content. A lot of them are kind of pissed off that they have to like do all of these platforms now and they just wanna go back to running a business and that is where you capitalize on. So there are a few different streams to this. Um, I actually put this up in my Patreon, um, I guess a more broken out version of this, uh, what I'm gonna tell you guys today. And it is um, a little bit more in depth and a lot of people have started doing it and already seen some early success with it, which is awesome. So um, basically what you're doing is you're selling a monthly subscription for you to come in and create a month's worth of content in an afternoon, in an hour, in two hours, whatever. Um, so let's take for instance, a restaurant, a local restaurant, say they have, um, usually restaurants come in like little groups. It's very rare to see just like a one-off, at least around here. So I approach a restaurant and I'm like, I will make content for both of your restaurants. I will come in the second of every month and I will generate like 20 images for you guys to use over the course of that month. And what that does is one gives you recurring income uh, that once people get accustomed to having such great photography on their social media page, there's a pretty good chance that they're not going to be able to go back to the cell phone photos after that. Um, the other thing is it allows you to also be kind of upgraded and to like be like, hey, I'll come and like cover an event for a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, whatever, um, and make it seem incredibly reasonable because like one, you're probably targeting the businesses that you actually want to work with rather than the other way around where you end up in a place with your portfolio that you're just really not that happy with. Um, so say you want to make that $8,000 and your subscription is $300 a month for you to go in and rock that shoot and create an entire month's worth of content. If you find 25 businesses to pay you that, uh, you can do that in a month and that is your $100,000 a year job and it's all on your terms that you can set up your shoots if it takes you two, three hours to go in and do one of these shoots or an hour or 45 minutes or whatever it is. And you can just structure them all back to back to back and just go in and just knock it all out of the park. And you can probably do five of these shoots in a day, no problem. Uh, means you're working five days a week with some post-production time. Um, and then you can also roll this into the back end of a social media management company if that's something that you would wanna partner with somebody or if you'd wanna do it yourself for the extra income um, and actually schedule and actually like be the one putting all of this content out here. Um, I would say maybe 20% of the businesses here do their own social media in-house. All of the bigger ones, um, all the ones with like a really good social presence for the most part, have a different company doing it. So if that gives you any sort of visibility into um, how little social media is actually done in-house now, it's definitely less than I expected. And I feel like that 20% doing it in-house still is a little bit high, um, especially for businesses that have multiple employees and managers and everything. It's, it's just way easier to just pay somebody. Um, and then also this social media um, subscription fee that I talked about, for $300, um, I will tell you right now that I know of at least five people doing this for $2,000 a month um, for specific businesses, um, for actually two restaurants that they're spending $2,000 a month to have their food shot and to have just a bunch of other just random images taken, as well as kind of the content um, strategy that comes along with that. So they are doing a lot more of the content um, strategy. So they are doing more of the strategy kind of behind the content as well as creating the content and rolling the content out. Um, so if that gives you any any indication that if you find four places that are willing to do this at $2,000 a month for you, um, that is your $100,000 a year job taking pictures and then I guess also doing other stuff. But you can hire somebody to do that. That's, that's kind of the thing that if, if you don't wanna do a thing, hire somebody to do it um, and just start that relationship quickly, bring them on as a partner if it looks like it's gonna be a split business like that. Also, coming up with social media strategy is a lot of fun. I also feel like I'm just like doing stuff down here and you can't see it, but it makes me feel like I'm like a news broadcaster or something. Maybe that's why I like the microphone. Um, the other bonus strategy, I guess, um, so this isn't one of the three, but this is kind of maybe a potential one that you can leverage if you're super good at a specific niche of photography. Um, so at $300 a month for the subscriptions that we talked about, if you get 25 of them, that's like, that's good, that's your $100,000. If you get 25 people in a room, say you're the best macro photographer, um, best like food photographer in your region, and you have an amazing portfolio of food shots and you're able to um, get 25 other photographers in a room for 300 bucks, um, which seems low, let's say, what is the math on that? Like 14 photographers at 600 bucks to come in and learn from you for the day. Um, that is now a one day, $100,000 a year job, uh, minus travel, because you couldn't just keep doing it in the same city. Um, also, you'd probably put yourself out of your actual business, um, which is a unique twist on 
um, what happens when you start teaching. But if you're able to travel to a bunch of different cities around your country, around the States, around Canada, um, and just kind of like punch in and do like five back-to-back -back dates um, or every other day um, to give yourself a little bit of breathing time and you can make that $100,000 uh, pretty, pretty darn quickly. Technically, 12 dates. So you get 25 people in a room, 12 times, charge them 300 bucks, um, you've made your $100,000. That seems super reasonable, right? Um, so yeah, with that, it's like kind of all about leveraging what makes you unique. Um, I've played with the idea of doing just like trips and like bringing a bunch of you guys like out on trips to like just go to Iceland and just take some photos and just hang out. Um, Thomas Heaton does that and it's like his business now. That is what he does. He just arranges photo trips and just puts them together and just like goes out into the world with people um, and he's built that off of his YouTube presence and I think that if you start a YouTube presence with the goal of that being what you want to be creating um, it's a very direct linear path to where you want to get to um, it takes a lot less time when you're that laser focused so um, next up this is my favorite one um, this is a, I wrote a song about this. I like this concept so much, or I like making fun of this concept so much. Um, so I have written down influencer, um, because we are all influencers. We are all influencers. We are the new rich. Attention is our currency and we all deserve it. And essentially what this is, is I, you don't need to be like a fashion influencer that just like goes out and just poses looking at the ground and hand in hair um, every single day. You can do something that is a lot more, I guess, fun and interesting and also uh, more evergreen. I feel like with um, kind of like fashion influencers, once Instagram goes away, it's going to be a very difficult place for them to continue to generate money. Um, I feel like it's also a com continuously competitive place that they are making less money um, per year, especially in the lower end. It's so hard to break into that market now and to get paid to, to wear clothes and get your photo taken in them um, because everybody wants to do it for free and everyone will do it for free clothes. So that's not what you're after. You are after the things that interest you the most and creating a great portfolio of work based around that. The other trick is that you really have to pick a niche, um, a place that you wanna kind of position yourself as like the lead influencer in. Um, I'm gonna change the word influencer to something or I'm gonna bleep it out. I'm gonna bleep out the word. Every time I say the word influencer, it's now, it's now bleep. Um, so you wanna pick something that is super niche specific to your interests and what you wanna be doing, and also one that you know actually pays for things. So photography specifically, you can get a lot of like photography accessories for free, but not a lot of people are going to write you a paycheck uh, until you get into the public speaking space, and then maybe not even. Travel is kind of the same way that we all look at these travel like vloggers and influencers um, on YouTube and around like just the internet, and what appears to be their product usually is not their product. Um, the most successful ones have gotten into the industry and built a following with the intention to sell a product behind that. And whether that product is a t-shirt line, like a merch line, which is a completely achievable thing. Um, let's do the math. If So say you're selling a $25 shirt and you wanna make $100,000. You're only making $10 on a shirt if you're selling them at 25 bucks. So you're gonna have to sell 10,000 shirts um, to make $100,000, which is, is not realistic, not reasonable. Um, even if you were able to do that, I feel like you'd have to really be hustling hard. And you'd really have to know Facebook and Instagram ads in order to get that through. Um, what I would recommend is if, say you're like a great yoga person, you're a great yoga instructor, that if you're able to create your following based on that and then sell a $45 yoga in-home training course, people are gonna buy it because they like you and they wanna support you and they want more of you. Um, so if you're building your following, knowing that you're going to be creating something like a cookbook or um, a photography book or whatever you wanna be creating um, for sale, just know that when you're trying to become an influencer, figure out exactly what your end game is and why you wanna become an influencer and what that product is going to be at the end of the line. All right, those are the three that I came in here with. Um, I actually, while I was kind of speaking, I came up with a few more that I like. These are more focused on video. So um, the, the bonus number one, I guess, is to create a promotional video for businesses that if you can get a company to sign on for 2000 bucks to make like a two minute, one minute promotional video for them. Um, if you're at $2,000, that means you have to find four of those companies a month and you can easily film those in an afternoon. Um, and just the, the starting point with that is to just go out and start generating samples. So go to the place that you already know the owners of or 
the, your friends of friends of the owners or whatever, um, get in there and make them a great video. Um, and then you can also spiral this content into something like an Instagram swipe up ad and Instagram stories and um, Instagram posts as well and do all these subcuts so that when they come in and maybe like your price point is like, I'll do a one minute promotional video for you guys. It'll be 59 seconds. So it'll fit on Instagram um, for like 1500 bucks, but for an extra thousand dollars, I'll also make you like 25 different pieces of content from that. Um, at that point, I feel like you're able to get a lot more money um, because you're generating a lot more value for that company. I guess that was both of the bonus points that I had written down, just put into one put into one um, thing together. So thank you for joining me today. This was uh, hopefully a motivational and inspirational video. Just remember that whenever you have a big goal like that, just break it out into smaller pieces and figure out what you have to be doing every single month to achieve that goal. Um, it'll make it seem a lot less, uh, a lot less scary. So go out into the world, your photography world. Um, also like the things that I outlined here, they're, they're guidelines, but there are really no rules and you can do any combination of these. Like, I feel like I kind of do all of these things, um, every single month of my life that I'll shoot a promotional video. I'll make some cuts for Instagram. I'll shoot a couple of weddings. Um, it's kind of what keeps it fun as well that if you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, um, one, it gets kind of stale and boring and two, um, you kind of limit yourself for if like a section of the market just completely falls off and nobody's willing to pay for it anymore. If you're all in on a specific thing, um, at that point you're kind of, uh, you're out to lunch. So do all the things that interest you, uh, just do them in a smart way. And that is all I have to say today. Thank you for following me on the, the YouTube channel. And I hope that this microphone brought lots of, um, professionalism and quality to this video. Got to clean all this money up now. Never thought I'd have to say that sentence before and be disappointed about it. That's why I guess they have rooms in the clubs. Not that I've ever been to a, a club before. I don't go to those places. Oh, I know how we can end this. Um, the Cloverfield ending where it's like the handy camps focus and like back focus. I'm gonna put it on the ground and do some, some shots of dollar bills, but my focus won't be that snappy. So it'll be less good, but still fine. Yeah.